Hi, so my name is Robin Toombs. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Yoti, and I'm just going to um, talk you through identity, trusted identity, biometrics can help the crowd funding, crowdsourcing, and sharing economies and smart cities. So we, we've spent the last two years looking at this problem. We think that today's identity, trusted identity, is fundamentally broken. It doesn't work very well for a consumer. Okay, that's partly because we don't own our data. Um, data is owned by government or identity providers or social networks. Um, or I've got my passport on. I go to a club because I'm 18. I don't drive, so I've got to take my most precious UK passport, and I've got to put that in a machine or show it to a bouncer, and I'm going to have a boogie, and 100% of people are going to leave the passport at the night club because they get a bit beard up and it drops out of their pocket, and that's a real you know, rubbish way of me proving my age and identity to get into a nightclub. So we thought about that and thought, that doesn't really work for the offline smart city, and it doesn't really work for the smart city where I'm sitting in pyjamas and I want to sign up to websites. That's the way a website is designed today, almost all of them. And I could use Facebook to make it a quicker experience, but effectively I've got to pass a lot of information uh, to this site. And whether it's a phishing site or a keystroke logging fraud risk, I don't really want to be typing all of that information into lots and lots of sites. I have to do that on too many websites and they then have to keep the data safe. So we think we should turn it on its head and you know you should own your identity. So I should own my identity, I should control my data, and I should also be able to minimise how much data that I give to people. And because of the way we do this, I can actually give more trust to people without giving them as much information. So normally you have to give a lot more information to gain more trust on a website, but actually you could give less information and give more trust. You can also, if you do have a trusted identity, the smart city can get smarter. So if I go to a gym or a swimming pool or um, anywhere where I basically think I'm a member of this community, I'm a member of this gym, if they know that they can trust my identity, they can put a membership action with potentially an expiry date on my identity, which sits on my phone, and then I can transfer to that club when I go through their gate that I am Robin John Toombs, I am a member of your club, I don't need to find lots of membership cards, loyalty cards, hotel cards, all the things which normally you have to have in your phone or in your pocket or your wallet to try and prove that you are a member of a particular community. It's important that that's basically linked to your identity because if it's just linked to my phone, I can give a very nice gym membership to my friend who then taps on the gate and he goes and enjoys the gym. So that's not, not the right solution. It needs to be linked to your trusted identity. So I should be able to share whatever I want with whoever I want. We spent a lot of time over the last two years talking to people and saying, how would you want this to work? And almost everybody has said, well, I theoretically should be in control of my identity. I should know that I've set it up voluntarily, and I should know exactly what I share. And ideally, I shouldn't basically have to worry about whether that company is finding out too much information about me and potentially tracking me and doing other things. So that was important to us that we built it as a consumer um, product. How do we keep all our identities details secure? At the moment, that's pretty difficult. You give a lot of details away to websites and then you keep your fingers crossed that they keep them secure. And we all know at the moment that some pretty clever hackers are hacking into all sorts of sites. And it's pretty difficult for all of those smaller sites to beat the hackers. Um, but they will need quite a lot of your information if they're going to sell you some goods, deliver them to your address, maybe need them you're over 18 if they're going to sell you some booze. So you're having to put a lot of hacker-rich information into a lot of small websites. You also have to use usernames and passwords. So we're 20 years into the web and we're still using usernames and passwords. If I've got an easy username and password, that's cool, but it's pretty easy for that to brute force it. If I've got a really difficult username and password, I can't remember it. So that, that doesn't work either, really. And the idea that I'm going to change my strong passwords regularly to a 
another strong password. I don't think most of us are, are, are capable of doing that without them writing them all down in another master place, which is, is not, not what you really should do. So we think that's where biometrics comes in. It's only really in the last year or two that the biometrics has got to a place where actually you could just by being yourself show people that you are effectively your identity and use this to basically prove it, to log into your phone, to effectively, you know, um, that trust and not allow anybody else. So my three kids love guessing my pins to my iPad, but none of them have got my face, thank God for them. But it's pretty cool for me as well because it means they can't get into my um, digital identity. Biometrics are on the up, so you've probably all seen in the last um, you know, two, three months, HSBC are doing voice biometrics, Amazon are doing selfies, MasterCard are doing selfies. Everybody's now beginning to think, hey, we should do it. But it's still probably not quite the right way because you're going to have to do selfies with Amazon, selfies with MasterCard, voice with HSBC. They're going to keep all of those biometrics on their websites and then try and match you to them. So you're replacing usernames and passwords for lots and lots of different biometrics kept by big and small companies. And maybe one day MasterCard says, look, we're so good at this that the small companies use our selfie system. We think that's what you should be able to do today, not in a few years' time, when one or two of those big companies try and offer a biometric login. We think you should be able to do that today. So those are some of the kind of biometrics that you can use. And actually, if you use two of those, it becomes pretty different. One of the biggest things you're going to look at over the next couple of years as people begin to use biometrics is spoofing. So you know, you've probably seen that the Play-Doh spoof of the, um, the Apple fingerprint. Yeah. You'll also see that some people will put a display attack, so a printout again of a picture of somebody and put it up against uh, a MasterCard. And that's why MasterCard have got the wink. But there's already people working on how to replay a tap video which winks at MasterCard. So spoofing is going to be a big, big issue. And you know, we think we've got some pretty clever secret sauce to make that um, work. But it is going to be a big issue for people. If you don't get the spoofing right, everybody's going to use the spoofing to basically get into your precious identity. So how does this really affect smart cities? Well, when you've effectively got a trusted identity, you can share things. And actually, I could just share that I'm over 18 with somebody, or I could share just my first name with somebody, but somebody could have confidence that that's come from a passport. Or I could share my whole name with somebody, or I could share my address. You don't have to share the whole of a passport. So an estate agent today says, either come in the estate agency in the smart city and show me your passport, or scan it and send it to me, and I'll put it on a C drive in an inbox and leave it there probably for a year or two, and who knows what happens to that later when that, when that gets retired and sent into the dump. So you, know, you don't want to send your passport number. You don't want to send your expiry date. That's a hacker's delight. You just want to share the right things so that somebody can trust that you are who you are without you having to give them way too much information. So some of the other things you can do in a smart city. So we've got one of the largest uh, locker operators who've said we've got a problem. So all of the big supermarkets and deliverers, they don't want to let you pick up booze as well as your bread from the locker. Because if you send your SMS pin to your kid and he picks it up for you and he thinks, aye, aye, that's a can of Fosters, they can drink that on the forecourt. The forecourt cameras go, what is going on there? So big problem. But actually, you could basically turn up at that locker, prove yourself with your identity, and prove that you're over 18. And then they can let you pick up your booze as well as your bread from that smart locker. You can sign into an office. Yep, so rather than having to keep doing the digital paper or the paper visitor's book and put it in Mickey Mouse or whatever, if you want to, you can just tap on that tablet and transfer your name to that office. Going to a bar. So you probably just want to tell, let people know you're over 18. You don't want to maybe tell them what your name is. You certainly don't want to let them know what your address is or your passport number, which is effectively what you're doing if you go into Tiger Tiger on a Friday night. They've got a big machine 
In goes your driving license, in goes your passport, every time. Visiting the doctor. Yes, yeah, so it's quite important that you really know who you are and you can make that very easy with filling in lots of forms. Your ID should be under your control. We've created Yoti so that one, it's free for anyone in the world to use. Two, it's end-to-end -end encryption. We have absolutely no idea how you use Yoti in terms of your name and your identity. All we know is that you might have transferred, well, we don't know it's you, but we know that someone has transferred their name and address to a website. That's partly because we're going to build certain websites, financial websites and a few other ones, and say, somebody's passed a name, somebody's passed an address, we'd like our 10p. Yep, I think they're pretty happy to do that. It's much easier than then asking you to come down to the branch or to uh, send a scan of your document and then work out whether it's a Photoshop or not. Yep, and it's really cool for you because it means we've got no idea who's done what. All we know is that something happened as a transaction. You and the bank both get receipts yep. so that you know that you can prove that you did transfer that information, you shared that information. So if you're sharing it with Zipcar, you know you've shared the right information. They can't later claim you didn't. Yep. But we have no idea that you've been to Zipcar because we don't know it was you who shared it. So there's no way we can basically sell your advertising information. There's no way we can look at your activity history. It's completely dark to us. It's only you who choose to do what you wish with your identity. So the app hasn't launched yet. This is effectively a couple of the um, uh, slides. We're attempting to be quite principled about that. You can obviously, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, see us walk the walk rather than just talk the talk. But we want to do the right thing. We want to encourage personal data ownership. Privacy and anonymity, so one of the most important things for us is where both parties want to be anonymous. You can be, but you can still prove that you're over 18. That's really difficult to do normally. Yeah, you would have to give information out or you'd have to show quite a lot of information on, a, on an identity document to prove you're over 18 unless they just looked at your face and said that's good enough information, but for the record we might need to keep your picture of you looking 47. Keep sensitive data secure, keep our community safe, be transparent and accountable, make Yoti available to anyone. So we think the sharing economy, there's lots of trust in the way sharing economy country, uh, companies work, so you know, reviews and all of those important things, but the first time I share a car ride with somebody else, you know, they haven't got a review, and I don't know who they are, yeah, would I like a bit more trust about somebody? Yes, do I need to know all of their information and see an image of their passport as just another car rider? No, I don't need to do that, but it's highly unlikely they're going to do anything bad to me if I know that they've shared their um, effectively passport-generated name or the name which is on their passport with myself or with Zipcar. Because Zipcar can basically say, look, we've had shared, we know who the person is but you don't need to know too much about them. How you create a Yoti is actually, it takes about 90 seconds, I'm not going to do it actually here, but you just basically take a selfie of yourself, you add a mobile and verify the code so that we're effectively tying you to a phone. And you scan your identity document. We match your selfie with your ID, so if you've got an NFC phone, you can put it on your passport, it's completely up to you whether you do it, but effectively if you do that, we will read the chip in the passport, so over a billion passports have chips, and over 120 countries issue chip passports, and it basically reads that chip, and it goes, that's the clean digital image of the face, check it to the passport, uh, sorry, to the selfie, and if they match at a very high level, we know you are the person who's basically on that passport, the information on that passport is your identity or part of your identity. Appreciate we're not just driven by what's on our passport as to what our identity is. And then you add a five digit pin, five just so that it isn't your four or your six, uh, in case people start guessing your four or six. And you can then basically use Yoti for the rest of your life. It takes about 90 seconds, 100 seconds. Um, 
and you can use it for the rest of your life. And it just continues to add a stream of new selfies. So when you log in to, to Yoti, you're just continually getting a new stream of selfies which match your old or your most recent selfies. And the first one it matches is the one which anchors you uh, to a kind of trusted document. That's kind of it. We think um, there's lots of companies in this sector who are keen to basically have a lower data minimizing way of providing trust. This is not the only solution, but it's one of the solutions that will help people to do more of these kind of transactions and basically be more efficient and effective in how they go about smart lives and their smart cities without having to go and find a whole load of paper documents and risk losing them and effectively making a load of journeys where you don't really need to make them if you started using the identity. Cool, thanks very much for listening.